What's up, guys? It's Carson Maddox. We're back on the Danglers podcast at ICAST. We ran into one of our favorite ever since his big win on the MLF Pro Circuit, Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit on the Potomac River, uh, Italian pro, Jacopo Galilli. Correct me if I said that wrong. Ah, no, you said it right. It's the first time probably I hear it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were really looking forward to seeing you. Out of all the pros, all the big names, I was looking forward the most to, to meeting you. That win at the Potomac was, uh, was pretty awesome. Yeah, I was Tell us really, a bit about that. Uh, it was really, you know, a dream come true for me because uh, this season, as I said already in my inter- previous interview with the MLF, I had so much uh, stuff going on. I started my season with a loss of the main sponsor, which was uh, Italian Road Company, that uh, they did prefer an elite guy over me and it was a pretty bad situation because I have been with them for six years. So I found myself like screwed and it was Christmas time, I couldn't go back home, and, uh, so I couldn't see my kid. And, you know, that was the, he- the the start of my season, started like that. So luckily I found new sponsorship with 13 Fishing, which also they make uh, awesome stuff and very happy at the end. Ended up being something good for me too, but you know, at the beginning was not easy. Also, switch roads and wheels, and you never use. Yeah, those are tools that you have to get used to it. You know, so Absolutely. it's not easy at the beginning. But anyway, going back to, to the tournament was so much important because I had the payback for uh, all the struggle and all the pain and whatever I did in these years. I have been here three years. I did some history, honestly, trying to be humble, but that's what I did, you know. I qualified for the Classic in 2018 and then officially in 2019 as a first European ever. And then last year, uh, from the Toyota Series, I double qualified for the Triple Warehouse and I had this shot to be the first European to ever win this tournament. So, uh, you know, this win was big, not only for me, but mostly for all these people that they really deserve to have somebody, a flag to pull for, you know, here in the States. Uh, I mean, from Italy, but not only from Spain, where is a big deal, the bass fishing. Portugal, France, we have a fanatic from, uh, uh, you know, uh, from even from Germany. Uh, bass fishing is growing in uh, Europe and uh, is becoming a big deal. So that win was a big deal also for all the movement over there. So it made me proud twice, you know, because of me, but also because of all these guys that were pulling for me. So it was super nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I bet you have an awesome, uh, a really good support crew back home. And you're only going to, I think, get more recognition and everything here in North America, because you're pretty entertaining to watch. You're uh, strictly business and fish with a lot of passion, and it's awesome yeah. to watch. I, I really like. Uh, I really love watching all that footage from uh, the Potomac. I, I think I went a little bit too much. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It but, was good. Uh, as you see in the boat, you know. <laughs> Give us one more. <laughs> in the boat. Yeah. Eighteen pound. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting yes. crazy. Yes. Guys. And, <laughs> The, the, uh, the other night I went to the friend house Antonio and uh, no I, I, I was in the truck he was bringing me to the, the, the to the to the airport to take the plane to come over here and I found on my seat a little pocket and what's that that's a present for you so I opened it and I had the hat <laughs> so now this is my signature uh, word and there probably we are launching uh, something nice also for you if you are a fan you know what what i really talking about how i did and uh, what i felt like i mean you know everybody i started thinking about that when i was 16 
I really ask everybody if they have the chance to go watch the documentary we shot last year with BKK, which is Bass Angling Life. It's like, a, I would say, an autobiography of myself, uh, fishing the Toyota series. And uh, you can understand a lot why I feel like that, because uh, when I was 16 years old, everybody was laughing at me. Everybody was saying, you can't do what you think. You are not good enough, you cannot do, you will never find the support to do it. And you know what? In some way, I don't know how, I found the strength and I found all the people and all the support and all the power, the, mind, the mental power to achieve my goal. So I am here, I'm making it, I proved myself and all these guys that I'm good enough and I belong here. So this is like so much important. It's like the biggest achievement of my life. Just because I'm a very proud guy, you know. So I really like like the fight. I am for fight, you know. You 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 kind of uh, uh, challenge me to do something. Oh, don't do that. I will do it. I will die trying, but I never stop. I will do it in some way. So that's how I am. So that's why that win was so nice for me. And that's how I got it also, because I'm stupid. <laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I'm chasing this dream too, but I'm coming from Alabama, kind of coming from, you know, the heart of everything. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sitting here with you too, coming from uh, international. It's definitely a lot, lot harder and a lot more that goes into He's it. He's got a lot more inspirational yeah. story <laughs> than me. Yeah, I mean, you, it's you not that uh, you have to be like me to be, you no, know, one day a big name. It's just, that's my trail, you know, it's just different. I always say that the, you know, the story behind is a really a Cinderella story, you no, know? uh, obviously, thinking about the bass fishing, you know, there is no Cinderella here, there is Jacopo <laughs> Gallelli, but, you know, the story is just beautiful and it's true. I mean, I struggled a big time, and only few people like me uh, know, they know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Takahiro Mori, which is a good friend, also my, honestly, a fishing hero for me. That's how, following his step, that's how I found the courage and the, dri the drive to be here and compete and say, he did that, I can do it, you know? Not, so that's what I thought in my mind. So not saying that, obviously, I wish I was from Alabama and everything <laughs> was easier for me. I tell you what, you know, I, I, when, I, when I started this trail, dreaming about this and a little bit becoming more used to it every time, I was saying everybody, I am born on the wrong side. That's what I was saying, you know, and that was my hashtag before. Now is don't dream it, be it, which is different, but different, uh, no meaning. But anyway, so that's just to say that I was not born on the wrong, on the right side. So I wish I was born in Alabama. I tell you what. So you are lucky, man. I'm and definitely I hope lucky. You, you will have a easier trail than me. For you sure. Know? I wish it for you. I think there's something to uh, to not being born in Alabama, though. You have. You have a lot more passion and the determination is, I feel like it, it, it takes more, you know, you want it more coming yeah, from somewhere yeah. like, I'm sure, Italy. This is true and uh, I don't want to say because of me, but there is no, no it's not the case that I am the only one ever, I mean, uh, so I am not the best, but surely I am the one that wanted it the most, yeah. I tell you. So, <laughs> you know, so when you really want something, that's my message for everybody. It doesn't matter if you want to be a bass fisherman or you want to be uh, the firefighters, I don't know. And uh, maybe for some reason you can't. Well, you can because you can do whatever you want in the life. Just really, you, don't, you never have to feel like you can't. You have just to put to it no matter what, you know. You have to be ready to fight whatever it takes. That's how I did it. Yeah, that's right. Incredible.
What's it like? Uh, what was it like growing up? I know you said the journey after you were like 16 years old was really kind of rough, but kind of dive further into what it was like yeah, growing I mean, up fishing uh, in Italy. My my uh, trail was from one side much much more difficult, but from the other side gave me all the knowledge. I need to perform very well in the States. I mean, I'm still fighting with some mental aspect of my fishing, which I cannot uh, always uh, control. But uh, uh, fishing in Italy gave me a lot of knowledge about techniques, because what we have, we have a very small country with a lot of small lakes, and uh, you can learn a lot because they are all different. You have a small swamp like a mini Okeechobee, then you have a small reservoir where you can just learn how to fish in those kind of water. For instance, if you are born in Alabama, most probably you never fish at a natural lake, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I did. Yeah. And yes, I did the fishing reservoir, lowland, yes, and island, yes, in Italy, one hour, both of both of them from my home, you know, and then what? I fish in big uh, uh, Pedemontans Lake, like Lake Garda, which is uh, very similar to Lake Champlain, and Big River. So that trail was the school for uh, knowing a lot of things and being able to don't be just a power fisherman or a finesse fisherman, but I think I can fish almost everything. That's my power. I mean, now, obviously, and in the last years, I think that probably the charter bait is what I can get the most out of it. Even if I think I'm still more uh, better of a hanger with finesse stick in my hands, and I never did a good, good result fishing with it. I don't know why. I can fish with four pound line, no problem, just to say. That's what I was doing back home. So just to say, you know, having that kind of background to me was a big opportunity for uh, being ready for uh, a big scenario where I maybe have to fish one day on Grand Lake and then another day on Champlain passing through, I don't know, the Mississippi River and then the St. Lawrence, I don't know, so something like that. So. And um, those years in Italy were long. I, I did very good in Italy. I mean, I started pretty early to make tournaments. I was, uh, uh, I think, 18 years old. And the very first to show up the second season of tournament on the Italian Championship, I got second just because Michael Anger uh, Lo lost a couple of my fish just leaving the life will open. It's unbelievable, but that's a real story. I lost two fish like that, and so just to say, I when uh, I made a lot of trail over there. I won several championship, all kind of series, even trolling motor series, which we have uh, in in Italy, and it's a big deal. It's our bigger tournament. We have like 300. Uh, Boats oh, in wow. those tournaments in the world in the world series, and um, you know I won all kind of tournaments over there. And then when finally I qualified for the second time as a Bass Nation champion in 2018, and then I won the MLF Italy Championship over there. So I had a, basically in the same year I had the shot fish the Costa Series, which now is the Toyota Series Championship and the Bass Nation Championship as Italian champion of the Bass and the MLF. So that's when I turned professional. That's when I said I go all in. Now it's the time to make the jump. I'm ready. I bought a boat. I was crazy. I know it. And then luckily I qualified for the Classic the week later. So, you know, sometimes you have just to believe in yourself and, yeah. be, and be a little bit mad. And that's how everything started. How that's does all. it work in, uh, in Italy? Do you guys have, like, the same bass boats? Or oh, no. Everything is uh, it's very smaller. As I was telling you, we have a lot of uh, 
trolling mustard series tournament be just because the gas is so much expensive in Italy is uh, mm. in, wow. na, right now which rose a lot is probably three times more expensive oh, gosh. at least two and a half and uh, also for the same reason we cannot afford to have a big truck like my Toyota Tandra so everything has to be smaller so even now our bus boat are rarely over eight, 17, uh, 17 feet I mean uh, I was a winning tournament with a, I had a S Express X17 that's what I was using for my tournament I was doing well with a 60 horsepower that's yeah. what I was using I was doing well obviously there were some guy with 150 200 very few because there were maybe rich people that yeah. can't afford to have a boat like so that. When, you, when you came over here have you ever driven a big with a 250 uh, I had the experience because uh, in Italy for one year I don't tell you the story because otherwise we, we uh, will be all all night talking about my story it's a very long story it's 20 years of uh, no uh, of working hard and uh, I was driving a Ranger uh, Comanche 20 for one year back home in Italy with a 225. So I don't want to say I was used to it, but for one year I had a shot to really have a very proper boat. And that's when I got second in the Bass Nation of fishing alone. Because our Bass Nation is a team tournament. And that season was 2012 was the season where I said, oh, I really need to train myself to be a pro angler tomorrow. So uh, I, I passed through all kind of experience. Even this is kind of crazy. I made a, a team tournament fishing alone, and I got second of like two points at the end of the year. And I was driving that boat for that year. And it was a big advantage, obviously, but I was still fishing alone. So the other guy were an old team. So that's another little story of my full story. No, yeah. So I was used to big boat a little bit, not very much. And I tell you, I have a couple of close call with my Phoenix. I said that Phoenix is fast. Yeah, because I was not ready for that. I mean, uh, when I came here the first time, trying to be a professional, I, I bought a whole bullet. That a bullet? boat was just crazy i mean it was like it was a, a grave with the engine on it <laughs> i tell you honestly and uh, uh you know um, uh, i was riding 81 mile an hour with that boat. so uh, i don't know i could survive i still remember i was in in uh, lake toho with the boat running 81 and the boat was completely out of the water and I was going straight, but the boat was pointing right. So I was kind of, what? <laughs> you know, have you ever had that feeling? It's a bullet drive, it's very strange. Because I think the prop, which was pulling on the right, because the boat was completely out of the water, was pulling the boat. So I was going straight, but the boat was kind of pointing a little bit on the right. So I said, oh, I want to be alive. I better. I better slow down. So I I, 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 I don't know. It was even tough to survive, honestly. Not only <laughs> to not win one of these tournaments, but I, I did at the end for the moment. So, and now, yes, I can drive a, a nice yeah. boat with no problem. <laughs> I, I learned. But at the beginning, uh, I had a really, I took some. I remember with the bullet, I was in Lake Toho with my brother, and he kept his, heavy bag on the bottom of the seating area uh -huh. and I was running and all of a sudden I don't know how I mean I was going so fast I saw the his, uh, his bag taking the, and flying in the head <laughs> like that <laughs> you know uh, I mean that just a strange story but I mean uh, my 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 brother was so pissed about it because we had the <laughs> our our passport inside his bag, so oh. we have to recover it. Luckily, it was still floating, so <laughs> we had our passport back. So, yeah. What does your brother do? Does he uh, have the my, same kind of dream? Uh, no, my my two brothers are both fishermen, and one is um, 
is a director in the bank, and the other one owns a big discotheque uh, with uh, 150 uh, employers. So he's a businessman, and that's what I was doing before becoming a bus professional. I was involved in the nightlife, and I was director in a nightclub in Italy, and I was working with a lot of American guys, you know, a lot of people from the Syracuse University when they they get there, uh, yeah. yeah, they come to Florence just to enjoy the CV. So we, I was uh, know, knowing a lot of American guys back home because Florence is very famous, and I was part of their night in Florence. You know, I was organizing their parties and doing things like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was also a guy that was doing a lot of things back home. Jack of all trades, a Jacopo of all <laughs> trades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome. You yeah. was. When you won on the Potomac, tell tell us about uh, that that moment when you got that the famous fish. Ah, like, did you know that you're going to be famous yeah, from that fish boat. when it happened? In the boat. Did you in the boat? Or yeah, was that, that fish? Uh, I knew I knew that if I could put that fish in the boat, it was done. I mean, and that's what the true story. Because then I made twenty, but with eighteen was enough. You know, yeah. Because I won over two pound, and I was like two pound and a half over the second. And when I put that fish in the boat, and I said eighteen pound, like yelling, <laughs> I knew I was enough. And uh, no, and then I put in the lava, I kind of relaxed, and I had the power to catch another one after the other a little bit. And I knew with the, that. 19 pound with the fourth big one was like a grave for the other one people and then i even had the courage to stop with five minutes to go that was just my perfect day i stopped on a small cramp just in front of the lounge ramp and said i want to make one cast before coming back hey i believe it or not i made the last cast made caught a four pound i put a three in the water back and I had 20 pound <laughs> limit. So it just, when those days happen, you cannot stop them. Yeah, they just, wa- just want days. to happen, you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. Definitely an inspiring win. Yeah. Not, yeah, absolutely. Not just the internationals, but you know, people like me that grew up watching that scene. Yeah. Everyone I, dominated. I, I knew, I knew really. And uh, I think because the night of the, from the third and the fourth day, I had a call from, uh, uh, oh, I cannot remember, the speaker of MLF, sorry. JT Kenny? No, the other guy, the bold guy, uh, Marty Stone. Marty Stone. Sorry, sorry, Marty. (laughs) (laughs) No, and he told me, I think he understood. He he, he could see what I was doing, and he had, he, he already knew I was going to win, most probably. The, the morning of the third day, after one hour, I had 15 pounds. And I kind of kept the spot, just not destroying it, because I have understood and I was developing, you no, know, every day, every moment, more and more my pattern, how to move that shutter bait, how they would like to have it, how long I could fish, catching fish on that spot, because it was only a low tide deal for me over there. And uh, because those fish were pulling out of a big flat and I was catching them on the drop where I had like kind of isolated cramp of a meal foil and uh, like the water was dropping to three feet, you know, from one, one and a half over the top with no room for them to stay on low tide because all that grass was compressing, you know, and just becoming like something where they had no room to stay. So they were kind of mechanically pushing away from where they were staying. And they have to come toward me and just uh, join my spot, you know. (laughs) So I kind of understood better and better every day how to fish it. And I think Marty Stone understood that. That's why he called me. And it was very nice talking with him that night, honestly. That's pretty awesome. Well, you have anything else 
No, for Jacopo? No, we'll, we'll let him get back after it. Yeah, he's got other things to do. Everybody here is busy, I'm Pretty sure. Pretty busy week. and. Uh, uh, I hope I will be more busy, my friend. <laughs> Has it been slow? Maybe, maybe I win something else. Yeah, there <laughs> so you go. Keep you know, winning. In the that's, <laughs> that's the thing I need to do. I mean, uh, I really need to to keep going. I am a small fish still, and I really want to... I, I think people really love me. I am a kind of like uh, Tahumi, ta so everybody likes him in the elite. I think... Uh, you know, we came out differently, but and uh, Takumi is also a friend of mine, so I am very proud of him and congratulations for uh, winning the Elite Series on the St. Lawrence River. So, what I'm saying is that if I can get more, most probably I will be enough uh, popular you know, to keep doing it all the rest of my life, which I wish I can. Yeah, so, you definitely have the determination. Awesome. You wouldn't have come too far, th this far to stop now. I'm sure you're going to Ah, no, going. there is no way. Yeah. And I tell you, sometimes I had many people say, hey, why you don't stop? Hey, I can't. I mean, I have done so much. What you see? It's how you can't stop? I mean, yeah. you invested all your life. If you stop, you are like, you know, you, everything you did is just nothing. You cannot That's do right. it. Yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of younger and uh, high school listeners. What would be one piece of advice you could give give them as far as to chase your dreams and to hmm, make it to where you are? My suggestion for them is just to make a small step every day toward where we want, they want to go. Small step, not big jump. You don't want to make no big jump. You have to take your time. You have to grow a little bit at a time. And uh, every time you get stronger, stronger. And then when you will reach there, you will see new horizon. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I can see further. Now I want why I see further. I see before I was seeing, I was looking at the tackle warehouse like a point of uh, where I want to be and now I watch at the Bass Pro Circuit and I tell you what I will be fishing on Champlain with the big boys in 10 days oh that's right yeah so you, you know so hey, if that, you need that, a place uh, to stay yeah maybe I will maybe. Come. I'm 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 staying uh, in Pittsburgh I don't know you yeah. told me that it would you be are. a far it would be yeah. a far drive anyways so, Thank you for the, of you know, the offer, but maybe we will go fishing together. Yes, okay, I, I, that is that my, like a plan. my next favorite lake. Uh, I really like the Potomac, obviously, but Me too. Uh, yeah, Champlain awesome. uh, is very awesome too. I think so that's yeah. that's so going back to my suggestion for the people that would like to realize anything in their life, don't think about making big jump, just make a small step toward the direction of what you want to do, always consider, always consider what is good for your project. You know? Today I do this, this is this thing is going with my project, yes, okay, I do it. It's not going with my, I don't do it. Very simple way to act. You have to be focused. If you start to look right and left, it's not going to happen. You have just to follow a trail and go straight with little step to your target. That's how I did. Awesome. That's great. Well, well, thanks for coming on. It was awesome having you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the, the, no, the interview. And I tell you honestly, that was the best interview I had in the, in the last days. I had many. I had another podcast, but with you guys, you, Good. you, I you appreciate look it. like We're you can really <laughs> understand my sentiments. You know? Yeah. And uh, I, I am very... Uh, happy because I can just talk with you like we have met, been friend together all the life. That's awesome. Maybe it m might seem like that, but we've watched your video probably. <laughs> so maybe we are friends uh, already, <laughs> even if I didn't know that. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's been on repeat. We love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming on and uh, have a good rest of the, rest of the show. Okay. Yeah. Ciao, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Maybe we'll go fishing sometime. Sounds like ah, a sure. We will do it. Thank you.